Good morning, folks. Today we've got incredible news, terrifying news, and a look at solar magnetism in a way I bet you haven't seen before. Let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding the last 24 hours on our star were another story of quiet, no solar flares or eruptions, but one is, of course, already on the way here. The filament ejection is likely to arrive tomorrow, but not until after the solar wind intensifies. The departing coronal holes have their winds set to arrive at Earth tonight. Coronal hole stream, then CME impact. Observers' official KP expectation for both events is 5 to 6. Minor storm conditions. Next set is transequatorial, as it is indeed the southern fields. That coronal hole is the strongest one right now. And the IMF could connect to Earth as early as tomorrow and for certain through the weekend and into next week. Let's jump down now to the U.S. February Climate Report. Pretty good mix of hot and cold regions. The full map page is in your links below the video. Up next, how well do we know Orion? Specifically, as we come to the belt, the part that would be too long and is hanging down, to where the oddly human-looking formation is seen. Turns out these gases and dust are hiding filaments of super cold material inside of them. 55 filaments identified, hidden by the cocoon. Speaking of hiding things beneath the surface, Jupiter's jet streams are revealing themselves and revealing what is beneath them. They are more penetrating than those we see here on Earth, but do so going down to a layer that acts actually rigid, rotating only with the planet. They also got an amazing snapshot of the super vortex at Jupiter's North Pole and the eight smaller sister systems surrounding it. Solar magnetism, more specifically the solar polar magnetic fields. Up top, we've got the north, south, and total. Below, it's just the total solar magnetism of both poles with area fill. Now notice what happened during the last reversal over on the right. That pattern broke in a way unmatched across the entire timeline. It is indeed our contention that this is one of the most viable signatures that hundreds of years of solar activity have hit a phase change, and a significant minimum is coming ahead. Up next, forget Mount St. Helens. Forget Krakatoa. Forget Vesuvius and Pinatubo. We're talking Tambora, Cerro Blanco, Rinjani, Taupo, VEI-7, volcanic eruption, something that would change the entire planet. From technology to air travel to air quality to the onset of the next ice age. In a moment, our fate would be sealed. We are not ready for such a thing, and worst of all, they say there's a good chance it's coming in our lifetimes given the fact that they don't even consider the exogenous forcing of cosmic rays on silica-rich magma under the changing Earth paradigm, I am concerned that they're absolutely right. How do you top that? Let's begin with the collaboration of scientists from SLAC, Fermi, and the University of Chicago. You've watched it take the world's best only about a week to fully realize the Cosmic Dawn 21-centimeter observations rule out every single dark matter explanation, except for those with slightly above quark mass, and include a small electric charge, which makes them electric particles, and not something foreign to the realm of matter. These are not the names you ignore in terms of research, and for the exotic, non-electrified particle, it is over. So let's find someone who thinks like we do, taking their moment to reconfirm that these results support her baryonic universe idea. Brilliant researcher out of Case Western, helping to light the only cosmological path forward. Threw a lot at you today, so we'll break it down more thoroughly in future episodes. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your world of wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.